Welcome viewers. In this video, we are going to do design procedure for transmission line tower foundation. This is type 2 raft foundation. So you can see on the picture left side at top, uh, having a four leg uh, from the structure which is connected through four number of pedestal in red color to the raft foundation which is in the base in gray color. So this is a foundation arrangement for a raft type of foundation. So in the middle picture you can see it is a casted site raft foundation having a four pedestal for the transmission line tower. In the right hand side the picture which is a 33 kV transmission line tower having a three phase of conductors. So this is the model in uh, Stat Pro. We are going to extract these fours and uh, do foundation, raft foundation design in future videos. So now let me go into that design procedure. First, the design procedure used to have design flow chart. So this is a design flow chart which is comprises of three major parameters in terms of design calculations and finally the detailing. In the first two parameters input, analysis, design of elements and finally the detailing. Now let you look into that what is the input. The input are three major categories, soil parameters which is to be referred from the geotechnical information. Second one is a tower leg geometry which is to be referred from the structure model or structure drawings. Foundation loads to be referred from the structure design calculations. And coming to the soil parameter, so these are the four major things which is required as an input. Soil recommendation, bearing capacity, density of soil, submerged or water table information. For tower leg or geometry, leg distance, base plate dimensions, so you can see on the picture right side. So this is a sample view of uh, soil types. ML is uh, silt, CL is a clay. So likewise there are soil categories are there. And this is the leg dimensions, generally we can extract from the structure model or drawings. So there are four legs having a base plate which are connected to the anchor bolt. So the distance between these leg we need to consider as an input for the foundation. And base plate uh, information, base plate dimension is required to fix the pedestal or column uh, sizes. And the anchor bolt spacing also we need to extract from the structure model. Foundation loads is nothing but it is a horizontal shear force in X and Y Z in plan view. Vertical forces in comparison and tension that is upward and down on forces. Movements in M of X, M of Y, both the direction, X and Y direction we need to extract from the structure calculations as a foundation force. Next coming to the Analysis of foundation. So analysis of foundation is comprises of two major parts. Uh, one is foundation geometry. This foundation geometry generally we need to arrive from the structure input that is a structure base arrangement and uh, with respect to the soil investigation report the foundation depth we need to arrive for the foundation geometry. Suppose if the soil is good enough to hold the raft to foundation or the transmission line tower foundation at the 1 meter we can keep our foundation as 1 meter but if it is going beyond uh, 2 meter as per the soil report then we need to go accordingly so similar like this uh, raft foundation the type of foundation will also change or vary according to the soil report if the soil is not enough to hold this transmission line tower foundation or it is like uh, uh, cohesionless soil or it is a black cotton soil or very loose soil then we need to go for a pile foundation or any other soil improvement other than the raft foundation. So the soil report also will change your decision on which type of foundation we are going to do. So likewise so the soil report we need to find out in order to arrive the foundation geometry also. And the second one in analysis part is foundation stability. Once after arriving the foundation geometry with respect to the structure and the soil report, then we need to check the foundation stability along with the foundation forces. So that foundation forces we need to do majorly the three type of stability check. One is a bearing resistance. 
so it is nothing but suppose the all the forces which is going to apply on the structure and and to the foundation that forces to be distributed to the soil as a the pressure uh, uniform uh, pressure as, as which is showing in the red color pressure diagram here so this entire pressure will be in a downward direction so because of the reaction opposite reaction the soil will provide a reaction due to the downward pressure so this pressure the green color pressure should be greater than the downward pressure which is coming from the foundation so if the upward pressure is greater than the downward pressure then the soil is stabilized even though the foundation load is transferred to the soil in case if the actual bearing pressure which is coming from the foundation is greater than the soil pressure then we need to increase the plan area of the foundation in order to create a more bearing area so that the bearing pressure will distribute more area and the soil will get stabilized and soil and foundation interaction will get stabilized so that there won't be any settlement or deflection of a foundation downward to the soil so this check we need to do first of all for the soil and the foundation interaction second one is check for sliding as the entire foundation is subject to shear or horizontal forces from the structure there may be a possible if the foundation is weak then it will be slide away from the original position so this kind of sliding check we need to do it means the sliding of foundation is based upon the sulfate of the foundation if the sulfate is very huge respect to the friction below the foundation between the concrete and the soil if it is greater than the sliding force which is applied through the structure then the foundation remain stable there won't be any sliding encounter so this kind of check we need to do in the second stage of stability then the third one is overturning as the entire foundation is subject to movement overturning movement which is from the structure it means the two pedestal are subject to tension opposite to two pedestal are subject to compression so this way there will be a lever arm distance will be created according to the force then the net uh, resultant force among the tension and compression will create a movement or a, a twist of the foundation so that the foundation will twist like this so in order to resist this the foundation should have enough sulfate and the soil filled over the foundation also having enough weight to hold the actuating movement from the structure if the overturning movement is less than the capacity movement resistant of the foundation then the foundation can be stabilized now let we go into the design of each individual elements so there are four number of elements which is required for raft foundation so the design of elements which is showing here is more common for uh, substation and tower also so the uh, substation tower also having the same kind of philosophy in some of the transmission line tower instead of going for base plate and anchor bolt they will be going for a stub kind of arrangement also yes that is also another a method uh, they are doing but most probably as the legs are very closer to each other in case of a smaller transmission line tower it is better to go with a base plate and anchor bolt arrangement so that the entire uh, structure can be modeled separately uh, by a steel fabricator and that can be laid over the foundation which is already casted with the anchor bolt so this could be a very simpler form when in case of uh, a close legged transmission line tower so this base plate and anchor bolt is preferred for the close legged transmission line tower also for the substation tower so coming to the design of elements the design of base plate anchor bolt design of pedestal and bottom pad each four elements having a different set of uh, uh, design procedures let we look into that 
this is design of base plate so the design of base plate generally we need to do with uh, three parameters so one is check for compression here in the picture you can see the first picture is having a uh, four blue color legs which are connected to the gray color base plate with the green color stiffeners so this red color and green color member are bracing members so this gray color base plates also having a holes inside that so the holes is nothing but the right color uh, picture is explaining that what is the hole about so the hole is about the anchor bolt placing there are three number of anchor bolt is placed placed here so this anchor bolt and base plate are the things which we need to consider for this tower transmission line tower so check for compression is nothing but here in that uh, there are nine number of six number of anchor bolt out of that some anchor bolts are subject to compression and some anchor bolts are subject to pure tension so this downward green arrow are subject to compression and this upward is subject to tension so because of this uh, compression and tension occurred parallelly to the two set of anchor bolts then there will be a stress occurred in the base plate so this base plate stress we need to calculate as per the check for compression and check for tension cases so based upon these two cases we need to arrive the sizes and the thickness of the base plate so we will uh, look into this calculation how it is going to work in future videos and finally we need to design the weld weld along the stiffener base plate and with the main leg member so this weld design also we need to do say we need to do so this design of weld compresses of three major forces this three major forces we need to consider that is longitudinal stress perpendicular stress and finally the shear stress so with these three stresses we need to check whether the thickness which we had assumed for the weld and the length of the weld and the type of weld either it is a filled or a half rounded weld so that weld is capable to withstand these forces that we need to check while doing the design of weld so with this the base plate design will get over next we coming the design of anchor bolt so in the design of anchor bolt there are two two type of uh, things we need to do one is check for embedment embedment meant is uh, nothing but it is a length of the anchor bolt which is to be uh, presented inside the concrete so that the, uh, the pulling or tension effect should not should not break or should not uh, pull out the anchor bolt without any re resistance so we need to build a resistant of anchor bolt to the concrete for that how much length this anchor bolt should be penetrated inside the anchor bolt so that calculation we need to make it in order to arrive the embedment length so that step is called check for embedment length, embedment, uh, length. so this will vary according to the concrete grade concrete bond stress and the type of uh, anchor bolt and the diameter of the anchor bolt which we are going to place inside the concrete we will see later next check we need to do for anchor bolt is combined tension and shear check as the anchor bolt is subject to uplift and the shear from the structure we need to check these three so by these two check the, in the first check we will be we can able to know what is the length of the anchor bolt and this combined tension and check shear check in this check we we can able to identify which diameter is required for this transmission line tower foundation so likewise this two check is major important to identify the shape of the anchor bolt next one is the design of pedestal so this pedestal if you see in the picture with the animation so the red color is a column or chimney there are two way of forces which are acting one is downward that we can call it as compression also the same member is subject to a bending movement similar like in the second picture which is animated as upward forces which is a tension having a same kind of bending so it is a tension with bending so these are the two pictures so these two check we need to do compression with bending tension with bending 
so there is uh, various code like european code or indian code or american code whatever the code may be the code uh, uh, the provision is having each individual type of uh, reinforcement chart for comparison with bending and the tension with bending from that we need to identify and we need to pick the reinforcement area for both the comparison with bending and the tension with bending so this is a design parameter for this two activities next one is slenderness check so we need to check how much length the uh, pedestal can go or how much deep or depth or height the pedestal can go It depends upon the uh, cross sectional size or width of the uh, pedestal suppose the pedestal is having a very longer length or height but the width is very uh, slender or very thin then the column will fail in slenderness so there is a limitation uh, for slenderness uh, value so that according to the limit uh, limit a limitation we need to check the slenderness value of the pedestal <coughs> and finally the reinforcement the reinforcement means it is comprises of two type of reinforcement one is a longitudinal reinforcement which we need to calculate from the compression and the tension with bending cases which is above two cases and finally the transverse uh, reinforcement we need to uh, design as a lateral uh, reinforcement like uh, lateral ties so with this the design of pedestal uh, uh, the procedure get completed next is uh, design of uh, a bottom pad so the design of bottom pad is having a three number of uh, three categories of calculation one is reinforcement steel so in that reinforcement steel we need to calculate two steps like one is for cantilever portion which is showing in the picture right and the left side corner or left side edge because the, uh, another one is simply supported which is the portion between the two uh, pedestal two column so why it is the when there is upward pressure then this edges are subject to sagging and in the middle that is between the column it will upward movement hogging so sagging and hogging will happen so this kind of uh, movement will required a tension reinforcement in both the top and bottom so we need to select accordingly the movement and its requirement of the reinforcement next one is check for one way shear so you can see the plan view of the bottom raft with the column when the column is uh, when there is a upward reaction from the base the column will act as a support or the reaction the reaction will acquire a shear in the connection between the face of the column to the raft so the distance the effective distance of the one way shear occurs at d that is effective depth from the face of the column towards the edge of the base lab so you can see in the section so this portion are subject to crack or the shear crack crack will occur if the bottom pad is not designed for one way shear so it means if the concrete is weak in concrete raft suppose the raft thickness is very weak in order to having this uh, one way shear then the there will be crack will occur at distance uh, d that is a effective distance effective thickness of the raft distance from the face of the column so this we need to check into that with the limitation of uh, shear stress of the concrete and if it is if the shear strength is greater than shear strength of the concrete is greater than the actual occurring shear from the structural force then we can call it as a safe in one way shear similar like for punching shear so the punching shear is a circumferential shear which is to be act around the column area at a distance d by 2 d is a effective depth of 
bottom raft so with that uh, distance it will occur around the column it is a circumferential shear stress occurred circumference to the column on the bottom raft so this shear also we need to check so this is also a critical shear check punching shear check we need to do in order in order to make the concrete element of bottom raft to be safe in both punching and one way shear so with this the design uh, procedure of uh, raft foundation for transmission line tower get completed thank you look description for more related videos subscribe to the channel for more updates thank you